Hi, and today we're going to look at glucose and its chemical structure. So hopefully you're all familiar with this chemical formula here, C6H12O6, which is of course the chemical formula for glucose, which you will have learned in GCSE. Now what you won't have learned is what this molecule actually looks like, and that's what we're going to um, look at in this video. So glucose in living things is actually found in a ring structure and that is a hexagon and I'm just going to show you where we place these um, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen molecules within that ring structure. So in the top right hand corner here we're going to have oxygen and then in each of these other spaces, we're going to have a carbon. And what you'll notice here is that there's only actually five carbons there. And we need to have our sixth carbon, which I'm going to draw off the top of this fifth carbon, as you can see here. And now what we're left with is um, some space to put the rest of our hydrogen and oxygen atoms. You may remember from your GCSE chemistry that oxygen can form two covalent bonds, as you can see here. But carbon can form four covalent bonds. So there's some spaces here left to be occupied. And they are occupied with hydrogens and hydroxyl groups. So a hydroxyl group is an oxygen and a hydrogen. And in this case here, we've got carbon, which bonds to oxygen, which then bonds to hydrogen. And so you can see this carbon here now has its four bonds. This oxygen has two and hydrogen can only form one. You can abbreviate this down and just write OH, which I'm going to do for the rest of this molecule. Um, but it's always important to show that actually the bond is bonding with the oxygen and not with the hydrogen. So I'm just going to show you the rest of this molecule here. So this carbon also needs two more bonds and they are with hydrogen and a hydroxyl group. And you can see I've just done the abbreviated form there. This one got a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen. Over this side, our hydroxyl group and our hydrogen. And you can see here I've actually reversed the hydroxyl group. Um, and that is just really so that I can show that that bond there is actually bonding to the oxygen. I could have written OH and just put it down here to make sure that the bond joined to oxygen, um, but often you see it presented this way round. Now this carbon here only has three bonds at the moment. The fourth one is occupied with a hydrogen. And then our, carb our sixth carbon, the one that goes off the top of the ring, has a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydroxyl group. And if you were to go around and check now, you could check the two, th two things. Firstly, check that there's six carbons, which there are. Check that there's 12 hydrogen molecules, which there are. And check that there's six hydroxyl groups, again, which there are. And in addition to this, there is a slightly simpler way of um, drawing this structure, which I'm just going to quickly show you now. So instead of drawing out the whole thing like this, you can simply draw your hexagon, draw your oxygen in the top right, draw a line at each of those points to represent where there would be a carbon knowing that each of these um, points here is bonded to a hydrogen and a hydroxyl group. And then showing that off the top here, we have CH2OH. So that is an abbreviated way of showing glucose. Now this is in fact, or what I've shown you so far, this is actually only one form of glucose and we call it alpha glucose. And perhaps you've come across the term isomer before. An isomer is where you've got two molecules, or two or more molecules, that have an identical chemical formula, but they're 
position in, in terms of their arrangement is actually slightly different. So we've got two isomers of glucose. We've got both alpha glucose and beta glucose. And they look identical except for one small difference. So this whole ring structure is the same. The one difference is the position of this hydroxyl and hydrogen on carbon one. And actually what you see in beta glucose is that this hydroxyl group is pointing upwards instead of downwards. It's pointing towards the oxygen rather than away from the oxygen. But everything else is identical. So when we're doing our abbreviated um, versions of these molecules, to show that this is alpha glucose, I would actually draw my hydroxyls on carbon one and carbon four to show that they're both pointing downwards and to show me that that's alpha glucose. And if I was then to draw beta glucose, which I'm just, you can see how much quicker this is here. And do CH2OH off the top and just show that the hydroxyl group here is actually pointing upwards, but still downwards at position four. And that's beta glucose. And that very small difference there actually has big knock-on effects in terms of the molecules that they can then go on to make.